<laughs> hey guys, welcome to the premiere episode, brand new show, first time, episode one of Pipe Dummies, brought to you by Cigar Federation, Robbie Raz here with you, um, getting ready to learn, to get edumacated on some pipes, uh, Logan and I, uh, Logan, you know, Logan, how you doing? I'll, I'll, I'll introduce the, uh, the other half of this, uh, this, of the dummies. The better half, and not yeah. so quite dummy. I, I'm 25% dummy. Rob's 75% dummy. 100%. That's about dummy. right. Yeah. That's. Anyways, that's, I'll quit talking shit about you. But no, I'm super pumped because one, first of all, I've just been reading a bunch about pipes and pipe tobacco. And it's just fucking fascinating, and I like the show because I can cuss. I don't have to worry about it, and that's another reason. But Rob's probably not gonna like that. So, anyways, really excited about the show. We're really glad you could be here. Hopefully, you will. You will take this journey with us because, like we've said, the name of the show, Pipe Dummies, we know nothing about pipes. We're more than willing. We want to have you guys start. I mean, I know we do. It's Cigar Federation for a reason because it's cigars. So we want people to kind of bridge, come along with us, learn, experiment, have fun, and, you know, bring new people into the fold. So I'm just really pumped for the show. Yeah, and uh, as, as Logan kind of put it, we're um... – we don't really know what we're doing. We've no been uh, we've been playing around with pipes since uh, you know probably August, uh, or at least I have, um, and you know, getting to, look, to know a little bit of this and that. You know, doing some research online, and um, and so basically we want to take this. You know, we're just taking that journey from cigars into pipe tobacco because there's so many different things out there. Uh, one of the real reasons that pipes caught our attention was in the last few years. Excuse me. Um, the folks over at Drew Estate have been getting involved in. First, they came out with some of their own uh, pipe tobacco blends. Then they got some uh, of the new pipes from is is I think it's it's Suge or Suhei. I'm not sure exactly how Suge! to say it. But we've got some guys here from Drew Estate. Sam and Joey are here to kind of uh, give us uh, an intro, give us uh, put some training wheels on our bikes so we can get moving. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us today. Cool man, nice to be here. Thanks for having us, bro. Yeah, I really do appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> so let's just kind of start out. What are what's What's your kind of background with pipes? I mean, I know we were talking about this a little bit offline, but uh, maybe kind of let everybody know what your experience level is and, um, and you know, maybe some of the things that, that you're smoking now. I've been smoking pipes now about, about three years steadily. You know, dabbled in it in the past like a lot of people have and uh -huh. just wasn't working. You know, I smoked you know, a tremendous amount of cigars, obviously, working at Drew Estate and just smoke cigars all day long. Um, but it was really, I mean, the thing with pipe smoking is, yeah, I had to find a place for it. Because it's like, it, for me, it's like different. It's not as social as cigars. Cigars are very social. It's very much hanging out with a group of guys and whatnot. So it took time for me to find a place where pipe smoking makes sense for me. And, uh, you know, I found that recently this past, like, year, which is it's more of a solitude thing with pipe smoking. I find more enjoyment in that. So find a back patio? Back patio, reading a book, or... Just chilling out with your headphones on, you know, disappearing for a while while the rest of the family's asleep in the house, you know, that type of thing. That's one of the things I've noticed about pipes, and and uh, like I said, only been a few months in, but uh, my wife will come outside and join me because I, I tend to smoke in the backyard or I'm, yeah. I'm in my office now. It's a detached office, so I get to smoke in here. But my wife will come out and sit with me. She won't do that if I'm smoking a cigar, but uh, it definitely attracts people. Uh, yeah, yeah. Be alone. <laughs> yeah. They, <laughs> They like the smell of it, especially the aromatics. If you're smoking aromatics, people are just going to be like, "Wow, what is that?" Right. You know, it's it's constant. And even here in the office where we smoke a lot of different stuff, you know, guys will walk through and be like, "Wow, what is that?" You know. And ultimately, it's usually an aromatic that's you know that's being smoked when that happens. So it's a pleasing, and people have memories too. People have memories of you know an uncle or a grandfather that smoked yep. a pipe and. Yeah. That's a big part. It's very much like cigars too. The memories that you have from, you know, you know, relatives and stuff, and that, you know, that reinforces that love of, you know, smoking tobacco. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, for me, all I've really smoked so far are is, is the aromatic stuff. Um, that's what I'm gonna be smoking tonight. You know, once uh, in a few minutes, you guys are gonna show us how to properly pack the pipe and, and light it and everything. Uh, I've got the um, Central Park Stroll, nice. from, uh, the Drew Estate Central Park Stroll. Logan, you got the meat pie there. Yeah, because uh, aromatics are for wussies. Yeah. <laughs> well, like you, Rob. Uh, can I ask a question, though? Can I ask yeah. a question about aromatics real quick? Because there's one reason. At first, I smoked probably two tins of the Central Park, Central Park Stroll. I loved it. 
At first, I was just in love with it, but there's something about aromatics that I got to get off my chest, and yep. I got to have someone who knows. Is that you open up the tin, Central Park Stroll? Oh, smells like a bakery. It's, it just smells delicious. The room note after you smoke, my wife walked in and was like, "Oh my god, this smells awesome." Yep. But when you're actually smoking it and retrohaling it out, it's not. As, it's very thin. Like you, you don't get that. How in the fuck is that possible for it to smell like that in the tin, smell like that in the air, but as you retrohale it, you get like maybe two to three, at least in my opinion, maybe zero to five percent of the flavor you get when you just smell it in the tin. How, how does that happen? One, it's just a uh, in pipe smoking in general, especially with the aromatics, that that aroma and flavor in on your palate and in your nasal cavities is is a lot less. I mean, I guess I guess it deadens out. Pretty quick because it's pretty intense, uh, depending on how strong the aromatic is. But uh, yeah, I mean the other thing too is it's the disconnect. You're smoking it, you know, through you know a wooden bowl and a stem. It's very different than a cigar where you've got you know tobacco and, and, and the right. mouth feel and that sort of stuff. So there's definitely a disconnect. Plus, it you know something that smells sweet. You know when you open up a tin and you're like, oh yeah, uh, you're not having any sweetness on your, you know, on your lips or on your tongue at all. So to reinforce that. And that's why with you know a lot of the infused cigars they have a sweet tip because it just it reinforces the aroma and the aromatic qualities of what's going on inside of it. Right. Got it. Yeah. Maybe maybe a question for the in the chat was what is an aromatic? Because somebody was like, what is that? So maybe we shouldn't take it for granted. So maybe that's a good question. What is an aromatic? The tobacco with flavoring, basically. I mean, they call it casing. That's that's the, the the right term to say. You know, it's got a casing on it. It's how, Tasting, okay. it's how the flavoring is applied during the process of making the tobacco, and generally, it's you know, it's a it's a mix of you know Virginia and Oriental tobaccos usually, and they're spun in a big, huge drum, you know, and you know, flavoring is you know, added, you know, in the in the air, and that's pretty. That's the main thrust of it. I mean, there's other tobaccos that are you know aged differently, you know, compressed, and you know, they achieve flavor that way. Got it. Okay. Okay. So before we get too in depth with sorry, you know, I had to ask my question. No, 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 you're fine. You're fine. This is all the stuff that we're here to learn. But we we're starting with the real basics. Um, and I think this this question here, this one's from uh, John Reiner. He is the cigar surgeon. Um, go Canada. Yeah, yeah. Go Canada. Canada. Look a stand. Um, he says so. Beyond a pipe, what are the other must-have tools that you need to get started? Oh, you definitely need a tamper. Yeah, tampers. I mean, a finger works, but yeah, tamper's yeah. pretty helpful. Yeah, tampers are great. You know, just it just keeps everything. You know, especially sometimes you have tobacco that's not burning. Uh, you know, just you know, consistent enough. And basically, with it, I mean, I don't know if you can even see it on this thing. That's you know, and you basically get it in around the top of the bowl, and you kind of pull, push it in from the sides and down, just gently. You don't you don't have to mash it down like like crazy. And that just really what you're doing is you're just sending the the burning embers, you know, down towards the middle, and it just keeps it going. Yeah. And, and beyond that, I mean, you know, we're with uh, in the cigar world, you're using torches. In uh, pipe world, you're going to go soft flame. Uh, yeah. Because I mean, you could really jack your stuff up if you're. Uh, you if don't you're want to blast it. I mean, we have. I use a torch on on some pipes, but I set the setting down to like the lowest, where it's just like. Girls barely coming out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Match, matches, of course, if you're indoors, is nice because you don't. Have to Blow through a whole box of matches outside your back porch. Yeah, <laughs> okay. You're like, oh, great, you know. Uh, and beyond that, like anything to care for your pipes, you know, like pipe cleaners. Obviously, yeah. I mean, we're not we're not using them for craft projects. We're using them to actually clean the pipes. You can get all these are pretty cool. Items. Let me see if I can take it off easy. I don't know if you can see on the stem. A lot of guys get worried about damaging there. If you guys can see a little like rubber, oh uh, yeah, rubber thing on there. That was you guys all know Johnny Brook. Johnny Brook ended up turning us on to these. I like it because when you're when you're clenching your jaw and you're holding the holding the pipe, you're not you're not as likely to damage the stem. And it really? also it also feels a little it's bit nicer. Soft, soft, yeah. Yeah. something to, to kind of bite down on. Oh, so it's kind of just just like a little bite tip for when you're you're clenching. Is that's what it's called, right? When you're smoking without you, that's what you're doing right now. It's like a pipe condom. <laughs> in a way, <laughs> I wasn't using that in my mouth. <laughs> Awkward. Hey man, uh, it's Johnny Brook, bro. He's not here to defend himself. So, <laughs> that's uh, 
And really, that's one of the things, like if you're ever looking at estate pipes, you can always see that there's going to be some teeth marks on it or whatever, but right. it's something like that would help you avoid that. So that's actually, uh, that's, uh, that's some pretty cool information. So let's just jump right in, because I, I want to get started. I want to fire this up. There's different ways, and I know someone asked this question here, um, and it may have not been uh, through the site, but I know there's different ways that you can pack a pipe. Oh, here it is. Uh, this one's from uh, Jared Grillet. Um, he says, uh, folks load their pipes in several different ways, from tamping in layers, uh, and the, that was the way you were, you were kind of alluding to earlier. Uh, that may have been offline before we started. Um, <clears throat> or just jamming, in, jamming it into the bowl with your thumb. Um, how do you load yours, and why do you do it that way? Basically, I just load mine so that it doesn't plug up. I mean, that's the main thing. It's not you don't want to cram the bowl so it's just jam packed. You know, um, I do on certain bowls depending on the size. This one's a little small, the one I'm smoking now. Um, this is, so this one, I'll just take a wad of you know tobacco out of the tin and just jam it in there. You know, just kind of push it down gently and and it's ready to roll. Uh, something with a larger bowl in it, I'll take like a, a good pinch of tobacco and make like a not quite a ball, but it, where it's at least stuck together a little bit, drop that into the bottom of the bowl, and then lightly pack tobacco on top of that, and then light it from there. You know, it's all, you know, you'll, you'll discover it just, right. you know, trial and error like anything else you do. Yeah, so there's there's really no one correct way to do no, it. No, not at all, not at all. Whatever the main, works for you. Yeah, the main thing you want to do is just avoid way too much. Yeah, way too much, too good, and... I mean, the big thing for anybody new, and I, I learned this, uh, and everybody learns it the hard way, I think, because when you first start to, to smoke a pipe, you gotta, it's so different than cigar smoking. you got to build almost like a pressure in your mouth yeah. so you don't just suck in <laughs> a, you know, just a, an absolute throat-destroying blast of tobacco smoke. Um, and then the other thing is, too, is you don't want to puff on it like crazy. Because then you get the nasty gurgle. Right. So when you're smoking a pipe and you hear that gurgle sound, that means that you're basically boiling your mouth. Right. Oh dear. Yeah. So so I've been, wrong. I've been doing it wrong. That's, every that's time. what happened to me, giggity. <laughs> well, uh, what, what happens is this: you you start puffing away like crazy, and it's and it's enjoyable, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm rocking this pipe, and everything's going great. Uh, what happens is from all that puffing over and over, it starts to heat up the tobacco a lot. And it starts to release moisture, so that moisture is just like steam. So not only you're pulling smoke, you're pulling steam. Mm -hmm. So you, you essentially like boil your tongue. Mm -hmm. So you get that. Uh -huh. you, you'll, you'll feel your one side of your tongue will feel like a piece of you know just destroyed leather or something. You'll be like, oh, this is not good, and that could be off-putting. So and, and I know a lot of people that like, oh, I, that happened to me, and I never smoked it again. And, you know, so that's something to avoid. You know, it's low and slow. Uh, don't worry if it goes out. If it goes out, hit it again. Right. You know, it's uh, there's no there's no uh, badness that occurs from relighting it over and over again. Right. That's one thing I was going to ask. That I find another interesting difference between cigars and pipe tobacco is that exactly like you were saying is that you know you let a cigar go out, right. it's completely different, right? I mean, you're it's not that it's ruined. I mean, all of us have relit cigars, but it's not the same. It, it's an investment. Yeah. Where I've been called away, you know, Callaway, you know, needed a bottle or whatever, and I've stopped smoking. I came back to my pipe, I tamped it down and relit, and there was no difference. Yeah. So why why is that with pipe tobacco versus cigars? Do you know what causes that, or just it just is what it is? I, mean, I think it's just because there. I mean, one is just it's an apple and an orange comparison in a way. But you know, tobacco because of the way it's bunched and rolled. I think when it goes out, out, when you really let that thing go out, it's not like if you just, it just happened to go out that moment and you relit it, it's different. But if you let a, you know, a cigar sit and it's already heated up because so much of that tobacco through the remainder that isn't smoke is heating up already and it's already started to release some of what makes it taste the way it tastes, go. So then you're relighting it and it's, you know, that flavor is going to be dramatically different. And a lot of times, too, if you're relighting, you really got to knock off whatever ash is left on the front of it. Right. You don't want to just cook that end up again. Right. Whereas with pipe tobacco, you just you know, just relight because all that ash kind of filters out around the side and drops down, so you're not lighting ash you right. know, so much. Another tip with lighting it, I think, I don't remember who told us this, but if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're worried about burning the, the edges of your bowl, of the... Of the, of the uh, 
I do that all the time. Uh, what you can do is if you lick your finger and you just you know rub the rub the that little edge around there when you light it you're not going to char char the bowl which is a lot of, what a lot of people try not to do. Huh. So huh. that's a good tip. <clears throat> now, I, I, I like I, the charred bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, now I think that would that would make a lot of sense with uh, with the the pipes that are made of that white material and I'm not even going to try to say it. Can you guys tell me how to say that word correctly? Meerschaum. 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 Oh, I actually would have said it right. Um, so yeah, I, I remember I had a couple of years ago. I was uh, I took a, a shot at smoking pipes, like we talked I about. I remember it. that. Didn't you sell it to uh, Keith from Leaf Enthusiast or whatever? Didn't you no, and him I, trade I, or something? I, I ended up doing a trade for that. I can't remember who it was. I traded it for a box of uh, or two boxes of because uh, it was an expensive pipe. Two boxes of the uh, Tatuaje Little Monsters back in the day, All a right. couple of years ago. Uh, but it was a, it was one of those CAO pipes, and they made them. I don't remember when they made those, but it was a, a, a dragon claw holding the egg, kind of a cliched style. Um, but I could never I could never light it without burning the outside of it. And with those pipes, they look so cool when they're pristine and white. And then you get that one little burn mark, and it jacks it up. So yeah, and just holding them too, they'll they'll age over time. The oils from your hand will turn it, right. you know, start to get yellow and stuff. You know, if you find any escape pipes like that, they're always like a golden, more yellow and amber. That's kind of cool in a way. Yeah, it, it looks cool when it's more uniform and it's everywhere. But when you just get a couple of burn spots, you know, I don't know, I felt like I just look like a A couple of freaking skid marks. Um, so I'm going to try to get through some more of these questions here as we try to uh, uh, as we try to get our pipes lit. So this one's a little bit more specific to um, the pipe tobaccos from Isaac Miller. Uh, he said, uh, as far as storing tobacco, uh, he said, should you store your pipe tobacco with your cigars? No. Or, how, or how do you keep it from drying out? Definitely not. Definitely don't store them with cigars at all. Uh, cigars are like little sponges, and they will they will absorb anything that's out there. So right. if you have you, you know you'll have all of a sudden your cigars will taste like you know pipe tobacco, and that's probably not what you want. Right. Um, I generally I mean I'll leave them in tins. I mean I smoke through them quite quite quickly. Um, if you're gonna be you know if you're having a lot of tobacco, if you bought bulk or you, know, you just have a lot of stuff that you want to keep. Uh, mason jars. Yeah. Mason jars is the the quintessential cheap and easy way to store pipe tobacco. Right. Uh, it doesn't have to be nearly as humidified at Actually, all compared to cigars. It just has to be in a cool, dry spot. You know, you know, depending on where you are in the country. If you're you know somewhere in the far north, well, maybe you want it in a damp basement, but not too damp. You know. Yeah. No. That's. Uh... I, I heard somewhere, and Logan, I don't know if, if you told me this because it came from that. Uh, there was thing. a pipe man's handbook, man. Thirty uh, percent humidity is what they say on average. Yeah, well, see, yeah, I heard ten. So thirty to forty. It's really low. Yeah. Okay. So it's, you, and generally, too, you can just you can leave them you can leave them in jars for years, and you don't have to use like a bovita or in the no, no, no. No, nothing like that. Yeah, I would imagine. Now, is there anything like with some cigars? People are aging cigars. You know, for there's the benefit there. Do you get that benefit, that same benefit from pipe tobacco? There's more of a benefit in pipe tobacco than cigars. To me, cigars. Really? There's a sweet spot in cigars that's probably, I'd say, three to four years in my book, where anything past that, all this, all the good stuff that was in the leaves is is gone. You know, or and it's leaving. You know, it's not like you're aging a steak and it's getting more tender. Uh, you know, again, it's an organic, you know, thing, so it's going to start to break down. So, yeah, it might smoke easier <laughs> if the cigar is 8 10 years old, but it's not going to taste the way the person that made it intended it to taste. And it's, you know, in my book, it's just not the same. It's, you know, to me, the sweet spot's three years, you know, especially if you have something pretty decent. Um, you know, broadleaf stuff definitely... We'll, we'll, we'll be in that sweet spot in about three to four years, but no more. But you were, but you were saying that there's more of a benefit for aging pipe yeah, tobacco. Tobaccos, the more, yeah, uh, the more the blends, because the combination of tobaccos that are used, just it changes in a better way than it right. does in a cigar. It's also definitely common for people to take different pipe tobaccos and mix them up. Mix them up, yeah. And so kind of that, that process of mixing the two together and getting them to absorb yeah. each other's positives. And yeah. I mean, because even when we've done the blending, you know, it's uh, it's not as dramatically different as in cigars, whereas, like, you know, you make a blend with pipe tobacco and you smoke it on the spot, you're pretty sure that 
that's exactly what it's going to taste like after it's married. Yeah, things will mellow out mm. a little bit uh, depending on the blend. Uh, but with cigars, you know, it's a different animal. You know, you blend a cigar, you smoke it on the floor, and then, man, you know, four weeks later, you smoke it again. You're like, hmm, man, something something went awry, or you have to, we have to go back and tweak something. And you know, there's a lot more mystery in, in getting a cigar to be right than it is, I think, uh, pipe tobacco. Okay. Pipe tobacco is, to me, it's a lot more. I mean, it's fun. It's a, it's amazing when you sit, you know, at a table full of. A variety of different leaves and blend, you know, and stuff to blend with, and putting it together, and you know, it's like a little, like having a big coloring book and crayons, and like, oh, wow, I can mix all this stuff together and make something pretty cool, and then you know, boom, it's going to taste like that. That's really cool. I was going to ask a question about the aging, and you know, and this is from the Pipe Man's Handbook, which I'm going to reference this a lot because this is really my only thing that I know anything about. Is People get squirrely with aging pipe tobacco. I was reading that they put them in mason jars, and actually, and this is going to show how much of a shit kicker I am, but my mom actually used to can, you know, strawberries and grapes and make jams and jellies, and they were talking about actually putting in mason jars and then boiling them like they, your, well, if your mom was a shit kicker like mine was, sealing the can so it sucks it in like in the mason jars and actually aging it that way. Is that actually true? People actually do that? I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, well, maybe, hey, maybe this is like the, no, the boy, crazy, like, crazy yeah, Pipe Man's handbook. Applying heat and stuff, uh, I don't know if I'd be a fan of that. But, hey, who knows? If it works and someone enjoys it, they yeah. definitely do presses. I mean, I've heard of that. Do yeah. tobacco presses. Yeah, that they'll do. But I haven't heard of that. I mean, and there's definitely, I mean, just like in the cigar world, uh, there's, a, there's a group of people that just only will smoke aged Virginias. Mm -hmm. You know, then that's it. You know, that's like, oh, you know, that's it. Smoke yeah. anything else, then you're, you know, you, we can't even speak to you. you know? I think our sales, our sales rep out in, uh, in PA, Sammy Smirkle. Sammy Smirkle. I think he buried like a of pipe tobacco in the ground or something. Do that? And then, like, Seriously? Yeah, I think he. I, I'm almost positive that I saw that he buried it and then like went back like a year later and dug it up. Yeah. And you don't want to use a jar like I know some people have done. Uh, like pickle jars and other stuff that they've had from, you know, and that's yeah. a no good thing to do because, yeah, the glass might be cleaned out and everything, but the inside of the lid has usually got stuff in it that, you know, the gasket that's in there and the material that's on the inside of the lid will still have that pickle and, and will turn your pipe tobacco into a nice sour, you know, sour dill. Oh, oh gross. So don't be a cheap ass and buy some new mason jars. Dude, they're like they're like ninety nine cents. So you can already swing that. Those other, I mean, some people don't particularly care about putting it in Tupperware with those, you know, vacuum seal lid things on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Glass is always the, the better way to go because then you, you're pretty sure that nothing's going to influence the flavors of what's going on in there. So well, kind of a, well, kind of a follow up question, Logan. I'm going to cut you off. Thank uh, you. This one's this one's from uh, Joe Gut. Or He's Gut. new. Gut, G U T. I'm yeah, going to on Joe Gut. Um, <laughs> sounds like he would be like an organized crime, like Joe the Gut. Um, anyway, um, he says uh, he wants to know how do you know if your tobacco is too wet or too dry to smoke properly, and can you take steps either way to correct this? Uh, a lot of aromatics, I will say, uh, usually straight out of the tin, tend to be a little on the wetter side. That's what I've noticed uh, the last couple years of getting into pipes. Um, I mean, you could just, you really have to stay with it, I guess, you know, open up a tin, let it air out for a day maybe. You know, it's not going to dry up into dust in one day, you know, and uh, you could do that, you know. That's pretty much it. I mean, if it's too wet, you'll know right away you'll, it just won't light, you know. You'll just, you'll get two puffs out of it and it's out and, you know, that's not pleasurable, so. I think also what like wet or dry. I think is also a little bit up to personal preference. I mean, I know yeah, some dudes some like their like cigars it. super, super, super moist. Like I have one one guy I know that does like eighty five percent humidity. Whoa! The only way that Hello. he it's That's just true. weird. I don't know how he likes it. So I mean, uh, and I've also heard people that store it at like you know fifty nine or sixty and different different you know different ranges. And some people swear by the seventy seventy rule. So I think a little bit of personal preference comes involved yeah. too. Yeah, it's always. Yeah, I mean, if I mean, obviously, if it's so wet that it's not lighting, right? Then you just kind of, you know, let open it up and let it sit in the air for a little while. Come back to it. Well, uh, let me. I'll go well, ahead. No, I was going to ask. It's kind of a follow up question, like uh, on not necessarily aging, right? But let's say I've got this 
a fine tin of Drew Estate meat pie. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to smoke. I'm not an eight, seven or eight bowl a day kind of pipe smoker just yet. I How is the best way to actually store this in a way where I'm going to preserve it? Like, you know, I've heard, I've read, and I've seen things where people, once you open it, it's you need to take it out of the tin and put it into a mason jar. Some people say, hey, leave it in the tin. It's totally cool. Like, what's the best practices around once you open up a tin? Or you have a bunch of bulk. Can you leave it in Ziploc bags? Like, what's the best way to do it to keep your tobacco fresh if you're not smoking every day? Yeah, if you have bulk, you can leave it in a big Ziploc. That's no problem. I have I, I have tons of Ziplocs here, you know, just just filled with, you know, tobacco blends and stuff that we've got. So we smoke it all the time. And, you know, sometimes, yeah, it might dry out a little bit. Some people will throw them in the, in a refrigerator in the in the vegetable drawer. You know, if you have really? your wife is 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 keen on that, that's good. You know, if you have like a man refrigerator out in your garage, or I something. do. Dude, that's a good idea. I didn't know that. Yeah. So if it's dry, you can just throw it in the and then being cold doesn't affect it or anything like that. No, not at all. Oh, that's cool. Well, it's it's funny how we we get so used to cigars being so temperamental. I mean, they, we've got exactly. all these different things. And we're like looking for some special thing that we have to do with pipe tobacco, but really you could just. I mean, and and again, depending on where you live, I mean, like here in here in South Florida, I mean, I can leave tobacco out just right. all over the place, and it's fine, you know. Huh, that's funny. I think what gets temperamental with pipes is probably you know different. You generally people use different pipes for different types of tobacco. Yeah. That that actually jumps right into uh, a good question. question. Question I was going to ask next, and this one's from Jay Zarata. Um, he says, "I've heard uh, that a pipe needs to rest between smoking. Uh, is this true? Should I have a second pipe if I plan on smoking a lot?" I would say definitely yes. It's good to rest them. Uh, what ends up happening is the the bowl will just overheat tremendously. If you're, if you're just smoking and smoking and smoking it, it'll just way overheat, right. and then uh, it just you won't be able to get rid of any moisture properly. Right. Although I have I have heard from uh, from some of the pipe makers uh, on Instagram, I, I when I started I, I asked that's how I kind of asked questions is I just contacted pipe makers and said hey you know am I, am I doing this right or what's the risks of what I'm doing and some of them did say that you know lighting it back to back you're not really gonna there's not like too much bad like you're not gonna break the pipe for example. <laughs> Is what is what they? Well, what some they guys. Say. I mean, guys that really do it, yeah, they'll yeah, burn off. I've seen guys burn holes through their bowls. Because really? They, Holy crap! Really? Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's that's hardcore. <laughs> that's like hardcore. <laughs> that is that is crazy. Yeah, yeah, the, well, the other thing is, I mean, in regards to you know different pipes, uh, yeah, the more pipes you have, the better because I mean, lighting up a, a nice cool yeah. pipe that's just sitting there ready to go is much better than one that's just you know already burning hot. You know, then you won't even be able to hold it if you smoked a couple of bowls in a row. You, you, know, you can't even hold the thing. And you, you definitely want to have more than one pipe just so that you can Pretty have one. For, yeah, one yeah, for be, aromatic. Yeah, you definitely need ones for aromatic and all the ones for. I mean, I would do three different ones. I would do aromatics, then I would do English, and then I would do like Virginias. Right. In that in that kind of space, because you don't need to fill it the ones. Because once you once you smoke an aromatic out of a pipe, it's going to be in there. You know, and if you're a guy that likes to smoke Virginias and taste like Virginias, well, you don't want any of that aromatic stuff coming in, you know, through the smoke. Yeah, that was actually uh, <clears throat> another question from Jason right. Myers. He was asking about the different types of tobacco because there's, like you just said, there's the three main categories, I guess. Basically, yeah, uh, and then tremendous amount of divisions even within those. Sure, sure. So, and that's called, like, from what I gather, that's called when a pipe it'll ghost a pipe if you have a. Uh, Something that's got a lot of flavor into it, you know, you're gonna taste that time after time every time you smoke it. So, um, so it makes sense to just have like kind of your three basic pipes. And I mean, I'm barely even a pipe smoker as it is, and I think I have like six of them or seven. Dude, I just bought three the other day, man. This shit's addictive. It's, yeah. yeah, it's it's too much fun. You know, it's a guy thing. You need more gear, and you need a spec. Oh, I need a special pipe for this, and I need you know, anything to buy more stuff is good, you know. Yeah, my exactly. wife and my wife buys it, so she or, or buys the excuse that I need it for different types of tobacco. And now that we're doing the show, she really can't give me any shit it's about it. It's for fucking so. science, Rob. It's <laughs> with a beard like Logan's. I think Logan needs a church warden, like a serious Gandalf pipe. Dude, I could do it. This isn't shit, man. Right before Christmas, I shaved. This thing was freaking epic. Callaway was pulling on it. 
I had to shave because she was pulling on my beard and ripping my my beard hair out. Oh, yeah, it was rough, bro. It Great. was uh, it was pretty epic. Um, I had another question here about pipes. I got another pipe question. Is that um, obviously there's there's different types of pipes. I mean, for example, I'm smoking probably the favorite one I've got so far, and I've got a handful. Is a suge, and it's got you know the robusto bowl. And we're gonna we'll probably get more into these pipes later, but it has different bowl options and stem options. You know, and I've got my little cheapy, you know, from my home state, the Show Me State, you know, Missouri Meerschaums. So if you were starting out, um, you know, obviously it's kind of like cigars, right, with humidors. I started with like a 20 count, and now I'm up to a 3,000 count cabinet. You just work your way kind of up progressively. Yep. Like, where's a good place? If you're wanting to get into pipe tobacco, where's a good? What are some good pipes to start with? I mean, is it good to have like a Cadillac and then kind of a cheapy, or I mean, what's the best way to kind of go about it if you need three pipes? Definitely, a cheapy is a good way to start. I mean, obviously, you don't want to just go out and spend two hundred bucks on a pipe, and if you you know you don't even know if you're going to enjoy it or not. So there's plenty of pipes out there. They don't have to be corn cob pipes and 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 stuff like that. But you can find you know. They call uh, was it Missouri Meerschaums? Mm -hmm. They're very cheap. You can find you know in, in any store, even online, of course, you can find any fairly decent pipe. You know, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, and that's fine. You know, you're not gonna, you know, no one's gonna judge you because oh, your pipe is only you know cost X. <laughs> so and if, and if they do, and if they do, fuck them. Who cares? Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> it's so. Uh, you know, it's about enjoying it, and, and if you like it, like wow, I really like that, and then somebody turns you on like anything else. Hey, check this pipe out, and then the next thing you know, you're on pipe blogs and pipe maker websites, and you know, and then mm. and you're falling down the rabbit hole and you can't get out. If you're like yeah. definitely going and getting a cheap pipe is the way to go for the first time, because I destroyed my first pipe. <laughs> I tell you that I, I mean, I took a torch full blast to the top. It was, it was bad. I could. Yeah, man. I mean, this thing looked towards the end. It looked like it'd been through a forest fire. I mean, it was just bad. Real bad. So you were the guy who burned the hole through his pipe. I, not, he not, by pipe on fire. not by smoking it, or by having a pot fire by my face. <laughs> not by smoking it, but just by fucking up. Right. Um, so with from from the standpoint, like you mentioned, church wardens and, and like and, and with the the suge pipes, like this is the robusto size, it's a smaller pipe, and the church warden has a long stem. Is there benefits or detractors from different sizes and different shapes? And some of them have the bends. Like I like the, the pipes that uh, I picked up a Peterson pipe that's got the bend in it, and I really like the bend. You like um, some bends like that? I don't know yeah, that's much cooler than what I've got though. That thing is freaking sweet. I like straight as an arrow. Yeah, and then there's the straight. I mean, is is it different or is it just kind of a personal preference thing? Preference. I mean, you know, I like I'm I'm smoking this pearly, pretty thin and wispy looking one with a real small ball on it, but. I enjoy this one, you know, and it hangs away from my face, and I can, it's lightweight, so it just kind of hangs. I can walk around the street with it, right, no problem. These are nice. I mean, the shorter ones like you guys have, they're just nice. They, they, they feel good in the hand, you know, you know, and you can sit them down, which is always nice, too, if you're sitting at a desk or a table or whatnot. I almost feel like the occasion's important. Yeah, occasion. What? Hey, what do you want to look like? It's a style thing, too. It's like, you know, what watch are you wearing? You know, having a certain type of style pipe. You know, you know, it's part of your personality. Yeah. You know, and generally, I think generally the bowls, regardless of what style you get, the bowls are generally about the same size. Yeah, yeah meaning roughly you know, what they hold. Yeah. I mean, if you if you look at like a, a Dublin pipe that's massive in terms of the the amount of briar that's used, you know, the hole there the bowl is about the same. About the same as a pipe that you know would be a smaller you know smaller yeah. briar bowl. So. Yeah, I was always curious because I mean. You go and you look, and I've got, like, I've got this one, then I've got the Peterson that's got the bend in it. I've got a, a church warden that's longer, um, and then one that's like a, like, it's called a poker. It's like a, it's a little bit, it's basically, it's straight, but it's a little bit longer. And then uh, corn cob. So they're all basically, every time I've smoked out of them, I haven't really experienced anything different. So I was just curious if, you know, maybe the length of the stem had any impact or anything like that, but I guess not. I think it has an impact the way it hangs from your mouth. Yeah. So it just it's more of a comfort thing as opposed to it's not going to impact the flavor or your smoking experience. It's just going to impact how how you feel. Right. And weight, I think weight of the pipe is very important. Yeah. In terms of in terms of feel for sure. That's one that's one thing that I like about this. This pipe is I don't want to say heavy. It's heavy in the hand. I like it though. There though. I mean it's 
it's got a really good it's got a really good feel to it. Like I don't feel like if I drop it that anything's gonna happen to it, but not like I would. And I also like that it's flat on the bottom. Like you said, I can just set it down on the desk and it can just kick it. But well, I the like other that, thing I the like about feel. this pipe is that you probably can't see it, and I probably just screwed up my pipe from taking it apart while it's lit. That's but cool. in this pipe, you can actually, if you see that, there's like a hole in it. So it's not. And what I like about this pipe is that I can hold it without, and I smoke fast. Everyone knows that. But I can hold on to it. This is not hot at all because there's a kind of a vac, almost a chamber down here that I can put pipe tobacco on. I know one thing. When I smoke out of the Meerschaum occasionally, you'll get that ash at the back of the throat, and that shit sucks. <laughs> so that shit's terrible. But this, you can put loose tobacco in there, and it kind of acts as a filter, and I think kind of enhances the flavor a little bit. And you can hold on to it right there, boom, and it's not hot. Anyways. And it does two things. That particular, the, the suge pipes that, that they make for us, that chamber works as a filter, yes, but it's main, the main thrust of why that's there. Uh, and why we felt it was important to have that, especially knowing that we were probably going to turn a lot of you know, newer smokers on to pipe smoking, is having that little bit of pipe tobacco in that chamber. I have a cutaway one with me. I don't know if you can see it. But hold it up. That's a cutaway. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So in that, when you have the tobacco in that chamber, what it does is when you're smoking is it helps collect some of that moisture mm. that in a regular traditional pipe, if you're smoking fast, you'll get the gurgle. And you know, sometimes you'll get like a sour taste. This kind of pulls that, you know, down into that chamber so then you're not smoking it directly like and then getting that sour taste and that gurgle. Nine times out of ten you won't be able to get it to gurgle at all, no matter how fast you smoke it. So that's, that's cool. So it, it makes it easier so you're not having to be so conscious initially. When we were coming out with it, didn't you like attempt to to like do everything that you could right, to true. gurgle it? Right, right. <laughs> right, yeah, but hey, Ended up turning my, my mouth a little bit, but it was an, it, it was all in the name of science. It is, dude. It's all about it, the science. It's I mean, everything is in the name of science. Someone's well, got to do it, and Joey was that guy. Hey, you got to somebody's got to be thrown up at the altar of science, man. And usually that's me, unfortunately. Um, but I think you guys led into it really well. I mean, obviously we've talked about kind of the one on ones. We've got a few more questions we'll try to tackle, but I think it's definitely worthwhile for people that don't know that are that are watching is. You probably hopefully know this, but Drew Estate's a lot more than cigars. It's not Drew Estate Cigar Company, it's Drew Estate Tobacco Company. And, and recently, you know, kind of two big things was the own, your own line of pipe tobacco, which off the top of my head, there's eight different ones. I think there's what? Two non aromatics and then six are aromatics. Oh, yeah, look at Logan. I think that's right. The Luxury Flake and then the Meat Pie, right? And the rest are aromatics, yeah. I think. And then obviously the partnership and the distribution agreement with was Suge for the pipes and then their pipe tobacco as well. So tell us just a little bit about, you know, tell people who are listening that maybe aren't familiar, you know, tell them a little bit about Suge, kind of their history, because I think it's really, really neat, and then also about the Drew Estate pipe tobacco. Yeah, well, Suge, I mean, you know, they're, they're a legendary family, you know, from Japan. They started out, you know, making swords for samurais and stuff like that. Nice. A real family history of craftsmanship. Uh, they parlayed that later into making pipes, and uh, Suge is, and, and his father, who has uh, since passed, uh, he learned from, you know, the European guys, and he came back to Japan and just, you know, worked on his craft to make, you know, he makes some amazing, amazing pipes, you know, ultra high-end collector pipes, you know, pipes that people buy and they don't, will never smoke out of them, you know, they're just museum pieces almost, they're just fantastic, but he also engineered these cool pipes. He came out with a line called E-Star, uh, which was very similar to the pipes that uh, he makes for us. And we loved them. We thought they were fantastic. Uh, the partnership is, is awesome. Jonathan had gone over several times. I know he brought his dad with him. They had a great time over there. They're awesome people. They're just really, really just into it. You know, it's their life. It's, you know, it's, it's what they do. And uh, culturally, they're, they're a match for, for, for us. Oh, yeah. Terms of, yeah. I mean, Sav, and, and he's got a right-hand man hero. Yeah. yeah, they're just real colorful yeah. people. They're they're just like anybody else. I mean, the fact that they are, you know, from Japan and we're from here, it was once you get together, it was like, oh, we're, you know, we're brothers. You know, mm -hmm. right? That's very cool. So, you know, in the the Drew Estate kind of pipeline and uh, your pipe tobacco line, you know, give us a breakdown of 
kind of what people can expect when they, when they see that. What I mean, what are the the different aromatics that you have and the non aromatics that you have in the eight? Well, in the in the Drew Estate stuff, I mean, we we went for all the like, and it's called cl Drew Estate Classics. So we went for all the big classic blends in the aromatics that people are familiar with. You know, stuff you know like the cherry, and, you know, vanilla stuff, you know, but with with a little tweak to it here and there. Um, obviously, meat pie was a nod to the English blends, you know, just real strong, you know, smoky taste. Um, with with the Suge blends, you know, we split it up where you know we did four that are very aromatic. Uh, you know, they're the four seasons, so we had to you know mentally think, all right, what does something in the spring? What type of flavor profile do we want for that? What type of flavor profile do we want for it? And we 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 did blends based off that you know, notion. Um, the other ones which are coming out later in the probably early spring, I would imagine the you know, there'll be four traditional ones that are called the God series. And those okay. straight up, you know, Virginia's Greek heavy blends, uh, and, and a little bit of the you know the smoky English stuff as well. And okay. those are for the guys that, you know, that would poo poo, let's say, you know, the aromatic stuff. This is this is to show them you know, we brought the goods, and I think they'll they'll enjoy because it it's really dynamite stuff. I mean, it took me a while to appreciate it, let's say. Okay. You know, because you know, when you're smoking aromatics, the flavors are more pronounced in the air and in the palate, whereas with the other ones, things are a little bit more subtle, uh, especially the Perique, br uh, Perique blends definitely would lend themselves more to uh, a cigar experience where it's, you know, more full-bodied, you know, smoke. You definitely feel... You know that that hit. You know. Hmm. Awesome. So, I got, I got a quick question though. Because <clears throat> we're, we're talking about I'm smoking the uh, the Central Park Stroll. This one's my favorite. Um, on the back, you know, reading the little uh, the little uh, description here, uh, notes of chocolate, vanilla, and caramel in the blend. And to me, it always, it always kind of reminded me of like a chocolate sundae, like an ice cream sundae. I mean, the flavors aren't as as thick and syrupy as you would think, but it, it, it's a bit more subtle. But um, with this, uh, the way that this the suke pipe, you know, comes apart like Logan was showing, I've put some of the cherry heirloom. Oh yeah, in the base. In the base. Yeah. While I was really? smoking, while I was smoking the Central Park Stroll, and to me, it really did give it like an, an another level of flavor. Is that all in my head, or does that really actually happen? Actually, I've talked to a lot of people that have been doing that. You know, it's, you know, it's science. Just, science mixing and matching stuff. You know, that's a varsity move. And that's not unlike. That's a good move. That's not unlike how we, you know, we blended a lot of these in the first place, you know. So it, I really am when I'm tasting that. It really is there. It's not just placebo in my head. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. I, uh, there you go, Rob. Well, look oh, at that. Yeah. yeah, that's that's crazy. That's good job, Rob. Hey, everyone, give Rob a, a round of applause. He did something interesting and awesome. Something so, happy we write is, you know, is leading to try to put something in your head. But a lot of times, it's 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 straight on, you know. Hmm. Sure. On on blending pipe tobacco. I mean, you kind of talked about it being kind of a similar process um, as cigars to a certain extent. You know, you have a, a blend that you're looking for. You have stuff. You put it together. It's kind of like making dinner, you know, cooking a recipe. You go back and tweak. But I've noticed, and this is a, a question, is that most of the pipe tobacco, a lot of companies, I've been buying some random pipe tobacco and Drew Estate as well, is it all seems to be made in Denmark. Um, and it's made by kind of Scandinavian tobacco. Is that how it all has to work? Do they make all the tobacco, and then you guys go and blend and buy it. It's not made down in, in Nicaragua or Esteli. No. I mean, no. 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 They package, I mean, a lot of tobacco is from, obviously, a lot of the blends have tobaccos that are from, that are sourced from all four corners of the globe. Okay. They do do a lot of, you know, blending and packaging, you know, in the, in Europe and stuff, and, and our first line of stuff came through there. Um, there's a lot of stuff that gets uh, done through the operation in Georgia that they have here. So we did, we actually did a blending trip to there as well. In Georgia? Yeah. And really? In the U.S., huh? Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So, yeah, so it, it's not, it doesn't have to. I mean, obviously, you know, like a lot of businesses, you know, uh, not unlike the spirits industry where, like, yeah, if you want to be in the, in, in the bourbon industry, well, you can you can source, you know, pre-distilled bourbon and you just need barrels, you know. So there's a lot of operations. But there's still a lot of small-time growers out there that you can buy stuff from and, and make your own blends. That's hmm. got, we did some of that for the uh, for the Suge line, and there'll be more stuff that we'll be coming out with later in the year. That's really cool. 
And it's amazing the variety of tobacco. It's it's just immense. You think it's more more so than cigars? Yeah. Really? It's yeah. I mean, cigars is maybe just a handful of really different actual things right. as far as leaf because there's maybe like two or three different plant styles that go on. Most of it takes place in the curing, you know, the curing process. But with pipe tobacco, there are so many. You know, you've got bright tobacco. You know, in the Virginia stuff. Then you've got the ways that you know flute, flute cured stuff, the perique that's done in the barrels. Then you've got you know Oriental tobacco. You've got the this Balkan stuff, which is tobacco that's like the leaves are like, like this big. They're like All little right. big leaves, and they have you know they have a great you know flavor profile that that's in those and. You, you know, use those in blends. So, I think the the palette of tobaccos you have to work with in, in blending pipe tobacco is just immense. It's just it's really immense. It's like being a baker. You know, and and it's when you're putting together a blend. I mean, you're doing things in like you know, five percent this, you know, maybe ten percent this, six percent this. You know, as you're as you're blending components together. So it's it's a bit of the science again. But again, that, you know, it's, it, and when it all comes together, that, you know, because of all those different combinations, that enables you to have such a grand variety. You know, between you know, you think about all the different pipe tobacco blends that are out there, it's just you know, it's off the charts as far as the variety goes. A good question, I think, dovetails is from uh, Jay Zerota, and he says, as a new pipe smoker, you know, should you trust kind of the the home brews or the the homemade or not homemade pipe tobacco, but the the house blended pipe tobacco at your local B&M, um, should you go out and buy bulk? Should you buy tins? I mean, what's a good way to, to get started sampling pipe tobacco without going, you know, balls in and buying 50 tins? Yeah, I mean, yeah, buy a tin. You know, buy a tin. Or, you know, if the, if the bulk is cheap enough at a, at a shop and you, you smell one that, that, you know, catches you, you know, do it. Brand new. I would say for aromatics, you know, uh, yeah, aromatics a tin a cherry, is not, You know, getting one tin of cherry. Yeah, it's not getting gonna one Virginia problem. blend, one English blend. Yeah. You know, get like you can get you can get some pipes that are, that are five dollars or less, yeah. like a little corn cob pipe. Trying, you know, tr separate them out. Try one in each. You know, get a little flavor. Get a little flavor in there and see what you like. Uh, That's, I mean, you guys can go. You can go crazy. I mean, there's like like Joey was saying, suge. You know, Suge, for example, has got some pipes that are thousands of dollars. Really? Yeah, you can get pipe. Yeah, you can get you know pipe racks. You guys, you can get you know pipe chests for. I saw a pipe chest the other day. It's nuts. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a humidor, but then it like opens up and it's like a almost like a like your wife's like maybe back in the day like a jewelry cabinet, right? And it was just all the pipes. And little yeah, just pipes. Yeah, it was super cool looking. Yeah, so I mean, to buy a tin is is it's, it's an easy it's an easy buy, you know, and then and, it, and it's not a tremendous quantity, right. you know, that you're gonna be like, oh my god, I just blew all this money on a humongous bag of you know pipe tobacco. Oh yeah, that, I, that's I, that's yeah, that's one of the things that Logan and I were talking about offline is <clears throat> that's maybe a little bit different than uh, the cigar industry in that even if you don't have a, you know a good local shop or whatever, you can go to some of these places online and you can okay. buy one ounce. Yeah. Of, yeah. Of whatever the bulk, if it's in bulk tobaccos, you can buy one ounce of this, one ounce of that, one ounce of that, and it's a couple bucks per ounce. I mean, you, dude, it's, it's like money. three bucks, man. I dropped a hundred dollars and just got like a chest of shit. Like, I mean, I won't be able to ever smoke it all. And it's just, it's, it's very. I think one thing I've noticed, I totally agree with, is that with cigars, you go out and buy one. And I'm not putting down cigars. So obviously, I love cigars. They're number one in my heart. But you go out and buy any premium cigar, you'll pay. You know, seven to say twelve dollars for that same price, you can go out and get three or four ounces of pipe tobacco or a tin that you might enjoy that cigar for an hour and a half, two hours, depending on size. Where this pipe tobacco tin, you're gonna smoke for <laughs> fuck a long time. Yeah, it's it's a much you. There's a lot. Of, it's, I think it's easier to sample a lot with less investment. Yeah, well, price per smoke is definitely a lot less in pipes than it is in cigars. It is. Yeah, I, what I've noticed with uh, <clears throat> with smoking a pipe, the the money that you're spending is on the pipe itself. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's that's yeah. where the bulk of your dollars are going to go, depending on what you want. Right. 
and then you know because you're going to need you know six, seven, eight exactly. pipes. Yeah, I, I'm not. I mean, where did you find that chest, Logan? I might need to buy one of those just because I'm I'm starting to the collection is growing. Dude, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I think we should probably just go ahead and spring for it now because yeah. you know it's going to be just like cigars. Yeah. It'll eventually get to where you know you'll need that tower humidor. I'm going to need the I'm going to need the pipe chest. <laughs> so got another question here. This one's for another one from Joe Gut. Um, just like saying his name. Uh, he's, He's in, I think I know the answer to this, but I kind of want to hear your take on it. it. I'll paraphrase. Is there is can you over can you burn the tobacco in your pipe? Meaning, if can I can I relight too often? If it goes out on me, is it, am I, is it a problem if I keep relighting? I've had to relight, you know, a handful of times just during the show because we're talking or whatever. But is it is there a number or an, an area where you just want to maybe stop lighting it and move on to another pipe or another bowl or whatever? There's no rule to say, all right, too many read lights, but you'll know if your pipe is getting hot. If you're feeling your bowl and it's it's blustering, it's like, oh man, I can't even hold this anymore. Then you probably got that limit where you should just let it chill out. Or, you know, either let it chill out for a little bit, or you know, if you still want to smoke, light up another pipe. And and you can let, uh, and I think we touched on this a little bit earlier, but <clears throat> if your pipe's getting too hot, I mean, especially with aromatics, from what I understand, aromatics burn a lot hotter. A bit hotter. Uh, than uh, than you know other uh, different pipe or different uh, pipe tobaccos, you can set your pipe down, walk away for 20 minutes, right. half an hour, an hour, come back, kind of clean it up a little bit, and light it up, and you're ready to go. Yeah. Right. And and it's not going to impact the flavor the same way it would a cigar. So there's kind of a way around that as well. And the flavor changes too. A lot of times when you're smoking a pipe, you know if you you're smoking a bowl in a consistent manner. You'll, you know, it'll definitely warm up, and the smoke will get warmer through, you know, as, as you're getting down through your bowl. So that changes the perception of the taste that you're, that you're getting as well. Right. Okay. Not, like, not unlike smoking a cigar down past the band. Well, you know, it's going to be dramatically different once you're past the band. You know, it's heating up. You're closer to, to that cherry. So. so, Logan, I'm looking at these questions here, and there's still a few left, but I think we touched on most of them. Um, let's let's talk about the special thing that we're going to do, and maybe you can ask one more question, and we can wrap it up. Because right, right. you know, being dummies, we have to go to bed early because our brains are too small to stay up so late. So, we, thanks to Sam uh, and Joey's graciousness as well as Drew Estate, um, you guys didn't expect to give away tonight. And let me just preface: there's no fucking weasels on pipe dummies. We're not going to have a giveaway every week, but because they're gracious to Sam. You are just urgent. Yeah, that's, that's everybody. <laughs> that's everybody. Wow. That's true, but we do have a giveaway. We figured we would do one tonight, and Drew Estate's awesome. It is sponsoring a giveaway. We have up for grabs, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Sam, eight tins of the, the Suge pipe tobacco. And is that one of each of even the four that are coming out, or is it two of the the seasonal collection? We've got we've got the the seasonal collection. Okay, so two of each of the seasonal collection. Right. And what what we will do to give them away is we will we'll, we'll copy Cigar Chat, email me Logan at CigarFederation.com, and before the show's over, I will announce one of the winners, uh, and we're going to keep a couple of tins back because we'll do something cool uh, next week um, on the site as well. So, Rob, continue with your questions. Oh, that's and that's the the suge pipe or the tobacco there. That's one of them. The artwork on the tins was really cool. Yeah, that was fun to work on. We had a, we had a blast. I mean, to be able to work with them, and you know, they wanted to do something very traditional in Japanese, and <coughs> wanted to do something traditional in Japanese, and you know, it was a lot of fun to put it all together. You know, all featuring you know Mount Fuji is on each one. And, yeah, that's really cool. Representing all the different seasons, uh, yeah, that part was really fun. The cultural part of doing that, just a blast. Now, now is is uh, we've we've talked a little bit about tongue bite, and um, <clears throat> you know that's kind of what you're smoking it maybe a little bit too fast. Your tongue gets a little bit tingly. I got a little bit of it going right now because I've been puffing a little too much. Yeah. Is is there any way once that kind of starts happening, anything that you can do to to uh, <laughs> to get rid of it? Just stop smoking. Yeah, yeah. You, once you get to that point, it's. It's time to go to bed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just not much you can do about it. I mean, just 
Just can't you? Isn't there? Uh, I mean, you can't obviously do anything, but I know if it like if it's bothering you, switch to the other side. Switch to the other side, and then yeah. there's isn't there like a it's like biotine or something like that. Someone was telling me back in oh, the early. There's like so I don't you know obviously don't go out and and and, and buy this because uh, you know I uh, obviously don't know the the actual name of this this uh, this juice. But there's a special. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta like research it Mouth yourself. Juice. Yeah, and it, like it kind of gets rid of it for you. I, I don't, I don't know the the, the, the exact one. Yeah. We have endorsed. This is not an endorsement. No. So. Yeah, it's, Drew Estate does not endorse this yeah. possibly highly a uh, cancerous <laughs> subject. Oh, well, you know, I honestly, I, like I said, I, when I, I I started smoking a pipe about a year ago. My dad started collecting pipes maybe five six years ago, and now my living room's you know cluttered with pipes. Um, but uh, the, I think there's tons of there's tons of forums. I mean, you yeah. know, different different places where you guys can just research information, and see what people do, and oh, what their now, I know nobody's touched on this, but clean your pipe. Ooh. <laughs> that was going to be my next question. Clean them. All right. Yeah, clean them out when you're done. Scoop out, scoop out whatever is still left in the bowl. You know, the scraper. Uh, you know, just get in there and dig it out, and buy as many pipe cleaners as you think you can never go through, and you'll go through all of them. Because uh, you'll need it, because man, you know those the stems. Some of the stems will, you know, that hole is really, really small. And it'll it'll cake up fairly quick, you know. So you got to clean them. So with with uh, I've heard that the more you smoke out of a pipe and the more kind of buildup that it gets in there, the better. Is that not true? Uh, I don't particularly think. That. I mean, the bowl itself will, like especially with aromatics. Obviously, the bowl, you know, the ghosting, you know, like sure earlier, that becomes you know embedded in the the walls of the of, of the pipe, but it's really in that stem area and that real you know the spot where it enters the the bowl. You want to get that clean because it just ends up being like you know like a cookie tar and that doesn't. I think they call it. Just it I think they call it caking. Caking. caking yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that yeah. So run your pipe cleaner through it. You know, get rid of some of that. I I think I even read some some guys uh some guys like take whiskey or bourbon or scotch. Yeah, that's what I was reading. Yeah. And they'll, they'll clean like line the pipe inside of it before you smoke the first time or whatever. Right, something like that. I mean, I, I haven't done it. I'll do that with just one pipe, just with that type of. Uh, right. Science. Science. Who's yeah. doing it? We need more pipes. It. And now yeah, probably me, man. I'm yeah, down. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty. Uh, when I got my my bourbon and my my uh, scotch going, I'm, I'm pretty stingy with that stuff. I'm not going to put any of that in my pipe. Well. I guess that's it. <laughs> for science, bro. Logan, well, that's you're it, man. Yeah, well, yeah. maybe for yeah, some of this. You know, that was when we had JD on. He was drinking some of that. And yeah, we just this was JD's. JD left this with us, and uh, well, poor JD, he doesn't have any more strength. strength. I, uh, yeah, that's what. What does a bottle of that cost the average man? I don't know. I you know, steal JD's. We're trying to. Yeah, we steal JD's bottle. <laughs> So you guys What's it cost the average man? Well, I was, that's what I was saying. I don't have access to extra bottles that JD's leaving around, so I'm just curious. I looked at their website, and it's, they're based in Colorado, I think, Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, uh, if memory serves. I'm going to have to track some of that stuff down. Yeah. Um, I think it's tough. So, yeah, so it, and as far as, like, pipe storage, I mean, you know, like we said, there's pipe racks and chests and all this noise, but really you could just kind of let them sit on a bookshelf if you wanted to, right? Yeah, sure. Doesn't yeah. make a difference. A lot of the pipe racks, too. I when I when I I have about six pipes now, and I went onto eBay, and you oh, can actually oh, oh, get place, yeah. like I mean you're talking five dollars for like a pipe. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then you know obviously if you, if you have like a sitter like the the, the Drew Estate line by Suge, you know those sit fine. Those aren't going to topple over or do or do anything. That's kind of how yeah. it's fine. flat on the bottom there. Oh, yeah, right. they're perfect. I even I think I've seen one made out of leather that hangs on the wall, that they kind of even hang the pipes vertically. Really? Yeah, I've seen all sorts of weird. Oh, I've seen stuff. a good leather pipe pouch. Too. Yep. Yep. You know, you open it, you open it up, and it's got like all the pipes in. It's little, like a merce slot. Yeah, it's like a giant merce with pipes in it. That's what merce. I want. The Garth Federation pipe merces. <laughs> Done. You have we'll to do that. So another thing that uh, you bring that up, I've seen those little leather pouches that people can ca you can carry your pipe tobacco around in there. Now, is it, it, you don't just throw it in the pouch. I mean, you got to keep it in like a Ziploc or something when it's in the pouch, right? In a Ziploc, and you know they'll have their pipe and their tamper and their lighter jammed in you know, one of the other parts of the, you know, the component. Yeah, it's just you know it's a man thing, you know. Yeah, it's, right. just, it's just more. We like to accessorize, huh? 
We do, man. It's like having your travel door and a freaking cutter and a lighter. It's no different. Yeah. yeah. Any excuse to spend some cash on something that we don't necessarily need. Oh, but we need it. (laughs) Yeah, we do. Uh, So let's see, Logan, are we going to announce the giveaways or are you just going to surprise people? You know what? I like this whole surprise thing. (laughs) Because, you know, because it's just, it's nice because you don't know and then it just shows up at your door. It's like Christmas. So one last but, question. Well, gonna say, but one guy I know is going to win because he asks a lot of questions and Rob's infatuated with your name. Joe Gut. Joe yeah. Gut. Yeah. yeah. And you live in, I'd love a 10. Oh, Joe Gut, guess what? You fucking won one. Joe so, the Gut. I love that. Dude, that Joe Gut's awesome. winning something. We're gonna add some, Logan, we're going to add some stuff in, into our send out for Joe. For Joe Gut gets extras. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna totally hook him up. Yeah, You're gonna bomb Joe Gut. We're gonna bomb the living bejesus out of Joe Gut. Okay, well just make sure you put his stuff in a special bag so I know what to send to the gut. Yeah, because otherwise Logan. Hey, that's not true. That's not true. Good at that. One one last question though, and this one uh, this one's from Mark Anthony. Um, the real one? I I guess. Hey man, <laughs> close enough. He's real. I know that. I don't know if it's the same one. Uh, he says uh, he attended the Southern Pied, uh, Southern Pied, Southern Fried Pipe Show in Nashville, and he purchased uh, he purchased a pipe from Grant Batson. Yeah, had a great time I've at the show. Name. And he says, "Can uh, can you shed some light on your relationship with the club?" Yeah, I mean, basically, you know, JD has become very close with Grant the past several years. Um, you know, more than just a business type thing, you know, friendship, and through that friendship. Uh, you know, our involvement in uh, the Southern Fried Pipe Club evolved into, you know, full-blown, you know, show. Yeah. And uh, we're looking forward to that leading to other uh, fun projects with Grant. Grant's an awesome dude. He's just super chill. He makes ridiculous pipes. I mean, they're, they're amazing. He's a fantastic craftsman, uh, and he's just a great guy. Yeah. So we're looking forward to doing more with him in, in the upcoming year. Cool. The pipe show, I mean, the reality is, is we, we, we went to a few pipe shows ourselves, and we felt as though some of the pipe shows uh, weren't necessarily geared towards, you know, a more like a lively audience. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the pipe shows that are around the country are that stodgy right. old guard, <laughs> let's just say. Right. Um, and they don't want guys with tattoos and beards and long hair, you know, infiltrating, you know, their club, let's say. Right. So this was a way of like, you know what? This is a pipe show for the rest of us. You know, That's cool. You know. Yeah, I can, I can see the uh, the other pipe, like the ones you're talking about. They, they These guys, are they're sitting in their library, their leather-bound books. They got the pipe going. That was a rich mahogany. Yeah, with the, with the, the, the ladder that, that cruises around on, around the room, you know, on the little wheels and everything. They're wearing the Brooks Brothers shirts, you know, the guy. Yeah, that's <laughs> – nothing wrong with that. I mean, God bless them. I'd do it if I could. <laughs> 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 my my library isn't built yet. It's being installed right now. I'm putting twenty dollars on it. But that's how Logan turns out, like fifteen years from now. Twenty years. What? From like an old pipe smoker? Oh, dude, I'll, he'll be an old pipe smoker. But I'll take that bet. He's never going to be the leather bound book with the. You might have that room, but it's gonna. It's Bro, not gonna be you know how long it took me to paint this room? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. If you no, if you go and you look at his books, I mean, there will be no creases in the binding. It will never. Oh, no. be. <laughs> It'll be all for show. Oh, absolutely! It'll be. They might be leather bound, but they will not be creased. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think you sure. can actually you can actually get a pretentious guy book collection, and they'll ship them to you all at once. Really? So, yeah, you just buy them in bulk. Yeah, it'll just hook you right up. They I don't know. I would assume so. These fake book cabinets where like they just have the spines glued in. Dude, that's what I need. <laughs> and they have like a whole wall that's, of like. That's awesome. That's that's only cool if it opens up and the back cave is behind it. All the works of Chaucer. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Get your Canterbury Tales on. Um, okay, so so I, yeah, I think we pretty much covered all these questions. Um, maybe if not directly, we uh, answered them. Well, it, let's see. Uh, Shooter's got one question. I guess we could wrap up on this. Uh, what are some of the reputable online sites for pipes and pipe tobaccos? So I guess he doesn't really have a place near him that he can uh, pick up some pipes or pipe tobaccos. So a- any reputable sites online that you guys can point us towards? I mean, you know, the obvious big one is you know Cigars International. Yeah, pipes and cigars. Yeah, yeah, pipes and cigars. I mean, they just you know those are the two big ones right off the top of the head. Yeah, there's plenty. I mean, as far as reputation goes, you know, you can see on the sites, 
you know, what they're being rated and stuff, and if you do enough poking around, you, you'll know who to buy from. Right. Yeah. Let me just say this. It's much harder to find a good online pipe tobacconist, pipe tobacco tobacconist, than it is cigars. A lot less people sell type pipe tobacco. That's for damn sure. Yeah. They don't have a good selection. Yeah, right. But if you're just starting out, you know, then the big boys, if you're already buying cigars from any of the big retails, you know, you know you can at least count on them that they're going to ship you the right stuff and it's going to get there in a timely manner. Sure. And, and generally the, the price is going to be you know, more than competitive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've uh, I've purchased stuff on my own from uh, pipes. Is it pipes and cigars or cigars? I think it's pipes and cigars. Pipes and cigars. Yeah, I've purchased from them before, and that's I mean they're they're one of the big guys, and I I'm not endorsing them by any means. I'm just saying that I, I, everything that I ordered showed up right, and I know that you have too, Logan. So th those are a couple that you yeah. can check out. But uh, we're gonna that's part of the show is learning to find out weed out the schmucks from the good guys. And that's what we're going to be doing on the show. We'll so talk you, about can, retailers. you can cut all those checks in the name of science and hopefully, you know, we'll hey, man. weed them out that way. Hey, this is a tax write-off, bro. This is science. <laughs> that's what you're going to put it under on your taxes. This is a yeah. write-off for science. Hey, Got man, it. this is uh, business development. All right. So, um, Sam and Joey, we covered a lot. You guys were gracious enough with your time to, to hang out with us. Really do appreciate it. We peppered you with a lot of questions that uh, – you know, I don't know if we were really prepared to get this many questions, so thank you for taking those on. Anything that you guys wanted to talk about that we didn't talk about or anything that we should have talked about that we missed? No, I mean, we hit a pretty good amount of stuff. I mean, just look for more. I mean, we're gonna, we are not stopping. Don't, <laughs> don't be intimidated. I think yeah. that's the best. Yeah, the best absolutely. thing is, is don't, be, don't be intimidated. The worst thing that you can do is have to pack another bowl. I mean, yeah. reality-wise here is you're not, we're not talking about anything tragic and uh, and it's definitely not your grandpa's hobby. I mean, now that now that we're no, moving so. in, you know, moving into the pipe space and, and taking a different role, we're looking to do all sorts of fun things yeah. with pipes and pipe tobacco that uh, that I think should change the game. Yeah, it's you know it's you know just opening it up to a whole new group of people that have it's been on the fringe of their interest, right. and now we can give it to them in a way that we feel is really going to open it up, and they'll be they'll be just part of their repertoire. You know, yeah. As cigar smokers, and, and they'll light up a pipe on occasion, and, and they'll enjoy both. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's that's uh, <clears throat> you just named us. That's kind of the uh, the category that I think we would fall into. And the more that I smoke pipes, the more and Logan and I have talked about this. Like, I'm, I'm a cigar smoker, Me and too. I'm and I'm learning to enjoy pipes. But as I the more I smoke pipes, I can feel like I could. It's it's going to become more of an equivalent. Yes, you know, I, I smoke pipes yes. and cigars, and then maybe someday I could just be a pipe smoker who enjoys cigars from now and again. I don't know. I, I just really I like everything about it. I like the way that it tastes. I like the feel. I like just the just the kind of calm that comes over. The, it, it, and maybe that's a little bit too much, but uh, I just no, like, I like the feel. history. Yeah, it's just it, there, it's just something that's just relaxing about it. I mean, smoking a cigar is relaxing too, but it's just a totally different. Uh, it's just a totally different they genre of tobacco. Cigars in the Lord of the Rings, they smoke pipes. It's fun, man. I'm telling you. When I love those movies. Middle Every Earth, time I watch it, I always want to spark one up. Always. Yeah, you're like, funny. right away you're like, oh, I gotta light up. You can and you can even use a pipe to nub your the last little bit of the cigar. I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta have your accessories. That's yep. what's part of this conversation for sure. Is it's all about the accessorizing. That's funny. Yeah, that, Logan, you're gonna have to do that one in the name of science too. Just now we need to have Johnny Brook on here and tell us how to accessorize. That could be a whole new show because that falls right into his domain. The only thing is, is you're gonna need to have like a four-hour show. Seriously? I mean, it's Johnny Brook, man. Dude, it's funny because I'll email Brook and ask him like a serious question. It takes like three days to get back. But if I email him and say, "Hey, bro, I'm about to smoke this pipe tobacco. I'm not really sure how to smoke this this uh, you know this flake," dude, answers me back in 20 seconds. Product is at an all-time high. Dude, it's awesome. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, well, guys, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Episode one of Pipe Dummies is now in the books. Um, thanks Hopefully so much enjoyed. for joining us. Yeah, I, I had a great time, and I, I feel like I, I've got some of the right tools, at least, to kind of get fo move further into this uh, this journey. Um, and you know, hopefully, maybe you know, in another six months, we can have you guys back on and, and get into a little bit more in depth with. Uh, I know there's a, like Logan talked about flake and ribbon cut. There's all kinds of different shit out there. We're just scratching the surface, so. Um, we'll check back in with you guys in a few months, and hopefully we can uh, kind of talk about a little bit more. Cool. Anytime, man. Pleasure. Really do appreciate it, guys. Thanks for checking us out. 
Pipe Dummies, you can find us on Cigar.com, or cigar, uh, CigarFederation.com. Uh, um, I don't know why I said that. I don't know. CigarFederation.com. I, I, I went from pipes to cigars. It just, I, I, have, I can only do one thing at a time. Quickly, there's can't. a Pipe Federation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, we... we we're probably not the domain. Yeah, we're going to have to just get in case. Some, some separation between the, uh, to the pipes. Oh, and the daddy.com, here we go. I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's already. It's. A, I already bought it. I sold it to Logan for forty five thousand dollars. Too. You could put the pipe hanging out of the eagle's face there. Be good. Yeah, you could totally do it. So his tail could be on fire and flames and shit. Oh, dude, it'd be bad fucking ass. Yeah, it just got epic. All right, guys, appreciate it. We'll anyway. catch up when this. We're gonna go every other week with pipe dummies. So we will be back. Uh, what's the math on that, Logan? It's like the twenty eighth, right? And uh, we don't even know what we're gonna talk about on that show yet, but it's gonna be fun. Nice. Well, the next episode we're having catfish. And we're going to just oh, like Oh, God, are we talk. really? I had to invite so it's him. Gonna be, so it's going to be me and you, and then Catfish is going to be up in his camera like this? Pretty you much. Know, it's yeah. like, hey, guys, how you doing? You know, check out my nose. I'm talking about how much he loves Frog Morton. Yeah, he needs to, he needs to just get but a that camera. that shit is awesome. Anyways. Not right in his grill. But anyway, all right, guys, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thanks for checking us out. Uh, Pipe Dummies on CigarFederation.com. <laughs>